Today, we're continuing our journey through Nelson Nash's Becoming Your Own Banker book. And if you've ever wondered what it takes to get started and start implementing infinite banking, stick around. That's what we're talking about today. Enjoy the episode. If you're an investor or want to be an investor and you're looking to create passive income that exceeds your monthly expenses, then this is the podcast for you. Here on the Infinite Wealth Podcast, we combine the philosophies of Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad, along with Nelson Nash's Infinite Banking Concept. Welcome to the Infinite Wealth Podcast. I'm Cameron Christensen, along with our co-host Anthony Faso, and today we are continuing our journey into Nelson Nash's book, Become Your Own Banker, and today we're talking about capitalizing your system and implementation. Mm. Anthony, I know you're excited about this. I am. I mean, like this is... Impl- Action is important. Yeah. Right. Cause often I mean, I've often said one of my biggest pet peeves when someone says knowledge is power. Yeah. Right. No, Knowl- knowledge is a potential of power. You need to put that into action to get true power. And that's what this is about. Mm-hmm. Right. So we're going to talk about how to get started implementing infinite banking. Awesome. Awesome. So we're on page 65 of the book. If you guys are following along, and uh, this is where Nelson's going to kind of start to lay out, hey, here's three, four steps that you guys can be doing to take action and implement. Anthony, uh, do you want to kick yeah. us off with one? Yeah. What do you got? Yeah. You know, what, I, what I do want to say before I get too deeper in, in this, and don't worry, it's not a dig about you. I got to imagine there's probably some people on the podcast thinking, I've already implemented IBC. Right? Maybe just skip over this podcast. Mm. But what I would say is that, there's going to be some good nuggets in here, maybe not by Cameron, and maybe if you're lucky, but I'm going to hopefully drop some good nuggets. And again, this is one of the things he's mm. talking about is one, one of the one of the four things we need to implement is continuing to learn. So even if you are implementing, I think there's going to be some value in this podcast. And again, Cameron, I even talked, hey, this will be a short one, right? Maybe 20 minutes. Mm. But sometimes somebody's got to tendency to maybe gab a little bit too much or maybe it's me okay but what page 65 you really broke it down i would say into four categories first one is the desire second is finding an agent third is joining a wealth club and then four is getting started now so on that note cameron with desire why do you need desire to implement infinite banking what's your take Good question. Good question, man. Switching up a little bit, huh? It's just yeah. instead of nuggets. I questions. love keeping you on your toes, questions. Right? Desire. Yeah. Uh, what I would tell you is that uh, there's a big difference between want and desire. And what it, what comes to my mind is, you know, I've been coaching these girls, right? This girl's my daughter's volleyball team. Uh, there's probably 12 girls that show up to practice. And there are 10 girls that want to be there. Mm. Right. Okay. And there's two that have this desire to win. Right. And they want to win and they want to compete and they want to do really, really well. They want to improve every single day. And there's a marked difference between the way that they approach practice mm. versus the rest of them. And so I think that's what he's trying to lay out right here is that there's a big difference between you saying you want financial freedom and then you desiring, right? Pursuing, chasing, working at getting better every day. Or desiring uh, financial freedom. Hey, Karen, I'm curious. Let's expand on that a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So you, you're able to see that in practice of who has a desire and who wants to be there. Got to imagine, no offense, there's probably some that don't want to be there. <laughs> but I like how you had that positive attitude, just lumped them up, lumped them in that they all wanted to be there. How have you seen that difference, say, in game day? You know, when you're actually on the court? And also, what about their growth from the beginning of the season to the end of the season? Any correlation between desire and want to? Oh, absolutely. So when you get to game day, uh, the girls that show up, they have that desire. One, not only are they showing up to practice with that mentality, is they're going above and beyond and they're doing more outside of practice, additional practice than most of the team when they show up and they're just there. So it's this inner drive or desire for them to be better. And what ends up happening is that carries over into the game. So when they're in a tight situation, when they're back there serving and the game's tight on the line, man, you can see the confidence that they carry. Uh, They're standing back there. 
They're ready to serve. They know they're going to get it in and not only worried about getting it in, they're trying to pick a spot or somebody they're going to hit it to. Whereas somebody that's not as prepared is a back there thinking about their mechanics and thinking about, man, am I even going to get this thing over? And so there's a big difference between kind of that situation. Uh, I'm, I'm going to add this too, is that because I had this call this morning, I'm going to correlate this and bring it back to what it would look like for an infinite banking scenario uh, for this desire. A lot of times I'll have somebody that will show up on one of our first meetings, what we called like a big picture. Uh, and a lot of times it's us kind of in giving them some information and you can tell if somebody's engaged or not. And I would say most of the time, right, everybody's there and engaged. Every once in a while you get somebody that might be distracted, but far majority of people are there and they're engaged. But man, I had a call this morning with a guy that I would say has a desire to learn infinite banking. He was there. Uh, he was in his home office. He had the door shut. Uh, but not only that is he was sitting there and he was taking notes. Every time I'd say something, you could see him looking down, taking notes. And then he'd sit there and he'd think and be like, hmm, okay, okay. And then he's taking screenshots of what we're covering. And then he's taking notes on the books and stuff that I'm recommending. And he's ordering it right there online. And so there's a huge difference between just showing up and then somebody that has that desire to get to a certain destination. Thanks, Cameron. That's uh, surpri that, uh, not surprisingly. I, I know you have some good nuggets, so, but th that was really good. And a couple of things that pointed out, it was their intent, mm -hmm. right? When they're up in the line to serve, they're not just, let me just get this over the net. They have the end in mind. Mm -hmm. And how important is that? If you want to achieve that financial success, you can't just say, hey, I just want to create some passive income. I just want to save or invest you, to really do that. Well, you need to do that with the end in mind and figure out what your goals are. And then you, once you determine that it's much easier to be focused and then your decisions can all accumulate in on you achieving, uh, that, that, uh, ultimate goal. Also, I would assume when they're on the line and particularly the, when you're serving is a little stressful, right? There's no teammate. Like it's all about you. And if you, if you flub it, I mean, the, the, the ball is going to turn over the people who want that desire from what I'm hearing from you, they're turning out the noise of that, of that stress or, or somebody uh, rooting against them or even uh, fulfilling the people who are cheering for them. And I think that also relates to infinite banking. We're going to hear this noise from your friends or your coworkers about their 401k or all of what the masses are doing, right? But we, if we have that desire, we're going to, again, be able to be focused on our goals to, to achieve what we want and not being distracted by others. Well said, well said. I've got, uh, before we move on, I've got a point here to make. Go ahead. Uh, in that first paragraph, really, it's the first line that Nelson has on page 65. And uh, I started reading this and I thought it was a great uh, exercise. What he says here is he says, assuming that you are by now sufficiently convinced that this is a course of action that you'd like to take. Anthony, I'm going to pause right there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a while since I taught you infinite banking. <laughs> <laughs> but at what point were you sufficiently convinced that this was something that you wanted to participate in? I would say for me, it was pro it, 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 it may have been right about here on this page. Like at, at least at that point, I'm like, I'm convinced I want to learn more. Mm -hmm. Right. And so then I went, went down on a jury on my own journey to do my own due due diligence. Cameron, I'm going to throw that question back at you. Um, mm -hmm. uh my, Don't say page 64. So it's right before the page <laughs> that I said. But. I wouldn't say 64. I'm going to say 44. <laughs> <laughs> it's on page 44, 45 is when he kind of uh, outlines uh, using cash or using a CD versus a policy. And for me, I've shared that before in this podcast. That page is one of the most powerful pages uh, for me in this book. And that's the one that I refer everybody. Go in there, read the book, make sure you understand what he's outlining there. And if you do, you will be convinced that this is a course of action that you want to take. Awesome. What else you got? Anything there? Well, I got a, a couple things on in, in regarding um, desire. Mm -hmm. 
one of the important things of reason why you need to have desire to pursue infinite banking is from Parkinson's law. Now I know that was from a few chapters ago, but this is something I've always struggled with. And really Parkinson's law has a couple attributes to it, but one is uh, expenses will rise to income, right? As you start making more money, you start spending more. You have yeah. a nicer car, go out to dinner, uh, nicer places or go on more, 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 more vacations. Also work expands to time allowed, right? Meaning like if you have a month to do a project, you're going to get it done in a month. If you have five days to do that same pro project, you're going to, you're going to get it done in five. So we need to have this desire to overcome Parkinson's law. Cause that's going to be one of or at least for me, it's the biggest human factor that's going to distract me from achieving my goals. Um, also, your things are going to change in, in your life, mm -hmm. and so are so are your priorities. So you need to have this desire to be active because your policies are going to change. Uh, <clears throat> also, infinite banking isn't a set it and forget it. It's not like when we go have our typical financial planner, we just stroke them a check or we just give them access to our bank account and then we just have hand hands off and just uh rely on hope that the money that the money is going to grow again if you just put the money in the policy that's going to really eat that'd be a better alternative that's where you can set it and forget it but what we're trying to encourage our clients to do not only taking this great efficiently designed policy, but let's leverage against it to create that passive income, which means that you're going to have to take a more of an active role in your finances than if you're going to do what, what, what everybody else is doing. And Nelson also had a good comparison where he's comparing this to exercise. And kind of what I liked is, when you start first starting out with your exercise, mm -hmm. you gotta, you gotta work at it a, a little slow. Maybe you're, you're using some, uh, lighter weight. You're not doing it a, a, as often, but as you progress, you can do more complex exercises. You can lift longer, uh, heavier weights. Also, you're going to get injured at some point. Which means, which I, we all know all too well, you're going to need to change your exercise program. And as, as I'm going through now, as I'm getting older, my body's working a little bit different. I need to be more flexible and I'm, I can't do some of the things that I did before. So it's constantly changing. And I think that's a prime example of your journey with infinite banking. When you're just starting out, you're just doing the, the light weights like Cameron. I, I, I know you have those pink uh, two pound weights, right? Th that's your first policy, right? You're, you're, you're just trying to go through the motions and see how this works, right? When just like you getting injured, when you have, uh, when in through in some lean times, we're going to need to change a couple things with your policy. And then as we get older and start winding things down, Again, we need to change how we're using our, our policy. So in order to, to, to be successful, or to, maybe that's not the right word, to reach the success you're capable of doing, you need to have that desire and be active in, in your finances. That's what I got. That was, that was good, man. That was good. Uh, I'm going to add something there, man. We're killing this desire, right? We're beating this thing to death. <laughs> that's the most important piece, right? It, it is. It, uh, yeah, that's, uh, again, I'm looking at this book here in the end of the paragraph. It says that a desire is important. Everybody's already spending all their financial resources on what he thinks is best. And so what he's alluding to is kind of pick off what you were talking about is change. Is There's got to be a change that's going to be made no matter how much I want it for somebody else is they're not going to change unless they want it for themselves. And so I think that's where that desire is going to come in. And I think that's probably one of the hardest things to do. If I think back of when I got started, I think I had it pretty easy to be honest is because I was sitting on cash. I wasn't putting money into some sort of qualified plan where I had to reassess mm -hmm. and be like, well, man, maybe I was making not the best decision or I didn't have to come to the conclusion of what I was doing. Wasn't, the best option for me. I really wasn't doing anything. I was sitting on cash and I'm like, man, this is going to work great. Where I think a lot of people, right, maybe a little bit older, 
uh, have been doing the same thing for a little bit of time, it's much more difficult for them to change what they were doing or reach that realization that, hey, man, what I've been doing for the last 10 years, 20 years is not the best option available for me. And so to change and to pivot from that is going to be an internal desire to get somewhere. And so I think that's what he's highlighting there. Um, it can be very difficult to change course. Hmm. Awesome. What else you got, Anthony? Cam, um, we good on desire? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Let's, uh... Well, the second piece he talks about yeah. is finding an agent. Mm. Mm. Cameron, how important is the agent in the process of implementing infinite banking? right behind desire <laughs> <laughs> it's number two uh it's it's very important uh finding somebody and again what nelson's talking about here is finding a coach uh mm -hmm. finding a coach or a mentor we talk about that all the time and when you're finding a coach or a mentor what you're doing is you're is you're uh buying time right is you could probably get to the same spot but in a, it's, if you go on it alone, it's going to take you much longer to get there. A coach and a mentor is there to point out things that you need to focus on to get the results that you're hoping to get. And additionally, Anthony mentioned it before, he's there to kind of drown out the noise. Uh, when I go through an education process on infinite banking, there's lots of questions that people will bring to me that they've gotten from uh, the on internet, YouTube, whatever it is. And a lot of it is just noise. And so mm -hmm. being able to tell somebody, hey, you know what? That is a good question. But uh, as far as kind of in the big picture of things, it's a very small detail as far as this. And then you can redirect and kind of get them to where you need to go or what to focus on. And so uh, having a coach or a mentor, uh, I wrote that same thing down. It allows you to go fast, focus on what's important and what works, and you're able to drown out the noise. I would say a lot a lot of times, and I'm sure you get this, Cameron, what would what people first are asking, what companies are you using? Mm -hmm. What is the interest rate on, on, on the dividends? You have a good agent, he or she should be, will, will be able to answer and solve all of those. But really the agent, and again, maybe we're a little biased because we are agents, but we also have seen history. We've seen people that are successful with infinite banking and that people who are not. And to me, the biggest attribute on their success is not the design of the policy or the policy itself or the dividends. It's your, it's, it's your coach. It's not only getting you in the right policy that's the right fit for you, but also helping you implement it. Because sometimes you should not use a policy loan. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you should. You need to rely on that, on, on, on that agent for that for for that guidance now um there is a um infinite banking i don't know what you call it on reddit group thread I a believe. thread uh on on infinite banking and it's very interesting some of the questions people are asking like there was one question i saw the other day is what happens if i don't put in my puas or one was uh should i pay off debt or uh or should i run that through the policy and then pay off the debt and i i, I even put in there those are questions for your agent you should build build the the rapport with somebody and that's what they're there for is to help guide you and if you're listening to podcasts a lot of these listeners are clients some people are clients of others and some are just new to infinite banking here at Infinite Wealth, we just want you to learn about infinite banking the right way. Find an agent that 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 you have a good rapport with. I mean, some people might be like, hey, Cameron's hair is so silky smooth. I'm going to feel intimidated every time I'm on a Zoom call. Well, then maybe Cameron isn't the person for you. Just keep my camera on. Right? Yeah. Or hopefully you get on my calendar so you don't have to worry about having uh silky smooth hair, but, um, you could, I mean, of course we would like to be, uh, your agent, but if we're not a good fit, go find somebody who is, and you can find somebody who's authorized by the Nelson Nash Institute at infinitebanking.org. right on the front there, there is a practitioner finder and you can find one that's in your area or at least people who are licensed in, your area. And in addition to help you 
know how to find an agent, we recorded a video that's the the, the first five questions you should ask an I and IBC agent. Not only do we have those five questions, even better than that, we took the opportunity to answer them mm. from our point of view. Mm. So you can know what to ask others and you and you know what our response is as well. Well done. Yeah. Great job on coach. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Number three, let's move on. Is uh, number three, what he talks about is uh, joining or creating a wealth club. Mm. Anthony, what are your thoughts on that? super important to be around like-minded individuals. Mm -hmm. You know, this is one thing that when I, when I realized I was in the right room is I was in a room with four or five people. And one guy said, Hey, how much passive income do you have? Mm -hmm. And we kind of went around and talked about how much passive income each had. And I would say, I I wish I would have been able to say more, Mm -hmm. but I, said the truth. Of course, on these, you always kind of round up a little bit, right? <laughs> you know, but, um, but that challenged me. So, and I knew that I needed to be around those people because those people are going to push me towards, towards my goal. And a prime example here is I, I was on a call with a client yesterday and he, he had a new job. So now he has that new opportunity to do his government created plan, like his four mm. his four his four hundred one k, and since he was an owner, uh, they weren't doing any matching because he was one of the owners. He was a partner, and he's like, I was thinking about. I know I have these policies, but I was thinking about putting the money into into this uh, into the four hundred one k. And of course, he went into you. Taxes going up or taxes going down? You know, do you want to pay tax on the seed or the harvest? But then we went back to his goals. And I'm like, you know, from our goals, maybe we need to update them. But what I'm looking at is that you want to cur- you want to create more passive income so you can quit your job. You want to be able to spend more time with your children and travel. If those are still the goals, you need to put your dollars where your goals are. If you put that money in that 401k, is that going to help you leave your job sooner? Is that going to allow you to spend more time with your children? If it's not, then don't, then do not put it there. And so this is an example where we had a client meeting, but this is where it's also important for you to be around like-minded people to be able to give you that feedback. And one thing we're going to do to, 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 to help you be in a community of like-minded people that understand infinite banking and are looking to, to create passive income is we, we finally have launched our private Facebook group. And it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of clients in there, but really it's open to anybody who wants to learn about infinite banking and, and to create passive income. So you can be in an area where people can answer your, your question, where you can ask questions. Not only will you get uh, a, a response from Cameron and I, but ideally you get responses from other people that are in the same situation that you are. Because I, I, I would imagine it's more impactful to get a response from somebody who is in the exact same situation you are than, than uh, um, Cameron or I. So we are going to put a link in the, the, the show notes. If you want to be able to be a part of this wealth club, just like Nelson talked about, be a part of a wealth club that talks about infinite banking and passive income. Well said. That was a little plug, Cameron. Well done. What man. do you want to add about the importance of being in a wealth club? Uh, wealth club, I think uh, to echo what Nelson says here is uh, he says, no one elevates himself much above the environment in which he operates. Uh, I will say for the to say this for me personally, I think one of the best um, uh, uh, events that happened in my life was actually moving out of small town Idaho and moving to Las Vegas. It got me out of kind of that friend group, and I have no idea where I'd be now uh, if I never left kind of that town. So uh, for us, uh, me and my wife, it's been tremendous as far as kind of getting out of that and just being exposed to different ideas and having different opportunities. 
Um, but being in community, everybody knows this, that the reason that you do that is to share ideas, uh, but also for other people to hold you accountable. Right? If you're in a group that's meeting regularly and you start stating goals out loud, they're going to hold you accountable, right? You can only state these goals for so many times and not hit them before they're going to start calling you out and saying, hey, man, what's going on, right? And so I think that's a big piece to it. Um, additionally, there was a thought that I had, and hang with me, I think I'm going to get this out right, but there was uh, a post that a friend of mine made. Uh, this is just in the last week. And he asked, what is more important, learning or relearning. And I thought it applies to this because we talked just a minute ago about getting a coach, getting a mentor, somebody to, to teach this to you. But the second part of this is getting in a wealth club or getting in a group. And so I think that's the relearning part to it is that Anthony, you just gave an example of where a client man, the guy knows infinite banking, he has policies, he's been around it, but he forgot, right? He forgot his goals. He forgot what he's trying to strive for. And so Again, is staying in community helps you to relearn kind of this goal and this activity in which you're trying to chase after. So I thought that was a good point. Another value of being in a community of like-minded people is you're, you're going to stumble, right? You know, and what comes to mind is when we interviewed Michael Zub Zubler from One Rental at a Time, when he talked about the horror story that happened on his first rental property. And fortunately, he had a supportive community that had him learn from his mistakes, or I don't even know if he made a mistake. It was just kind of uh, just circumstance, but was able to give him the confidence for him to get to get back and 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 to to get in the game because so if you're going to try something like i would say like my son chad is starting a uh, vending machine business nobody none of his friends are really talking about uh, businesses right they're, they're the early 30s they're just trying to uh to, to pay their bills and establish their career and he's going to have a, this first machine or what this may not be as successful as he wants. And if he's hanging around those people who don't understand, they're going to be like, Oh, you shouldn't have did that in the first place, man. You need to do this. You need to max out your 401k. You know, you don't do that again, but he needs to be around people that are going to be, okay, let's talk about what, what, what went wrong. How can we learn from it? And how can you improve on, on the next time? Well said, well said. Awesome, man. You got one more point here? What's the last one? The last point is to do it, is to get started now. Any comments on that? <laughs> Just do it. Just do it. Uh, Nelson wraps up this, uh, this section, and what he talks about is, above all, get started now. The longer you wait, the more you've penalized yourself. Uh, I like the way that he phrases that, is you are uh, penalizing yourself. You're the only one that's going to miss out. Uh, if you choose to wait. And uh, for me, the thought that comes to my mind is that when you wait on infinite banking, you're not missing out on the first couple of years of a policy, you're missing out on the back end. And if you look at a policy in the last couple of years, man, it looks really, really good. And so uh, that's what you're missing out on. So a, a delay of a year or two, man, it can make a big difference uh, in retirement in those later years. And I know there's a lot of people that Maybe they're, they're listening to this podcast right now and they've listened to multiple podcasts. Maybe they've read the book, but just like I alluded to before, you got the knowledge. Knowledge is just the potential of power. It's time for you to put it into action. One way to do that would be to get on a, a discovery call with us and we can talk you through maybe the time's right. Maybe it's not, but I will say it's always the right time to learn more. Mm. Right. And if the time for you to execute is not now, we will let you know and give you some guidance on what was some things for you to accomplish. So the timing can be right. So you can move forward. Well said, Anthony. Uh, great, guys. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode today. We just reviewed uh, kind of Nelson's capitalizing your system and implementation. We covered the four topics. One, desire. Two, find an agent, coach, uh, infinite banking practitioner to help you guys along the way. Get involved in a wealth club. And then four, take some action.
Go make it a fantastic day. Take care. If you like this video, I know you'll like this one. And if you want to learn how investors use infinite banking to increase their returns and lower their taxes, check this out. And if you want to, if you have some questions and want to see if infinite banking is for you, hop on a discovery call with us. Link for that will be in the description.